Hi, this is Wade Smith with our Get Smart series. Today's topic, can IO calculate forecast error the way I want it to? Forecast error seems to be a sensitive metric for a lot of companies. So it's not surprising that there is a lot of focus on whether or not the calculation matches the current internal value. The answer, it doesn't matter. I'll cover three topics in this talk. What is forecast error? How does IBP calculate it? And why do I care? Let's get started. How bad did you guess on your sales? Or, as one of my colleagues likes to say, how less wrong were you? So how different were your sales from your expected forecast? Once you go past that high-level definition, things start to fall off the rails. You eventually need to answer questions like how far in the past you want to look, what happens when you don't have enough examples, how many examples do you need, do you want to correct for bias and or outliers, do you have intermittent demand that you need to account for, do you want to account for lag. Most important of all is what statistical method makes the most sense for your business. So that's the general answer, but how does IBP handle it? Although IBP will output several error measures like total absolute error or weighted absolute percentage error that will no doubt keep your internal statistical expert busy for weeks, IBP really only expects one of two methods to be used for their calculation. MAD or MAPE. Believe me, you want to use the method that IBP is expecting. It just saves a lot of hassle. You can control multiple parameters like I pointed out a few minutes ago. How much history do you want to use? What's the maximum value you allow? What's the default value in the event of insufficient history, etc. All those parameters can be adjusted pretty easily. In fact, you can have one set of parameters for one group of materials and another set of parameters for another. You can even take this calculation and do all sorts of manipulations with it to find the best answer. But at the end of the day, it needs to be one number for each product, location, and customer group. So why do you care? Obviously, you want to make sure you are accurately reflecting your forecast error so that when it comes to calculating safety stock, you are getting a good output. However, it's really easy to end up getting to the point of diminishing returns. Hopefully, you can quickly get to a simple forecast error calculation that gets you 95% of the way there. And then as you become more sophisticated with IO, you can intelligently tweak the calculation. So if you can't tell, I've spent a lot of time with this calculation and trying to get it perfect. But in truth, we found that the IBP provided calculation to be designed to work best for the IO calculation. If the calculation starts to get too complicated, then many times you just need to take a step back and see if what you're doing is actually making a difference to your inventory levels. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to click below to like, subscribe, or comment.